for a Coors Field special last night. The Rockies and the Dodgers combined for 14 runs and 25 hits, including Andre Ethier's 14th home run of the season, the 300th double of his career, and Corey Seager's first big league triple. But not even Jock Peterson's magnificent run-saving catch in the eighth inning could get the Dodgers any closer to their third straight Western Division title. Carlos Gonzalez's walk-off home run is 39th of the season, is 26 since the All-Star break won it, and so it was the last place Rockies who celebrated while the first place Dodgers would need to wait at least another day. Their magic number remains at two. It's a beautiful day for baseball and live from Coors Field in Denver, Sportsnet LA presents the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Colorado Rockies in the final game of this three game series. Hi again everybody, Charlie Steiner, Oral Hershiser, and Nomar Garcia Parr. Now we're down to the final eight games. The Giants are seven back, so the magic number is two. A Dodger win, a Giant loss, and the Dodgers can sew up their third consecutive Western Division title. They've got Alex Wood on the hill this afternoon. And so what are you done for me lately kind of league and time of the year? Brad Anderson's kind of struggled. Mike Bolsinger has struggled. We're going to see who ends up being the third starters if the Dodgers go on and clinch and get into the playoffs. But Alex Wood against these Rockies two outings ago was dominant. Eight innings, one hit, five Ks, no walks. He had his location. He had all his stuff working. He's going to need that working in a series where we've already seen six home runs in two games. Alex Wood on the mound, but he's also got a newcomer in left field that's been outstanding of late. Yeah, that's Justin Ruiz. Ruggiano. We talked about the young players making an impact for the Dodgers. Justin Ruggiano, not young, but making an impact nonetheless. How big of an impact? Well, in a Dodger uniform, he's hitting over 340. In 16 games that he's been in, he has 11 RBIs. And why will you be in the leadoff spot today? Well, this is what he's done versus left-handed hitters so far. A 378 average and an on-base percentage well over 400. So Ruggiano is in left. Jock Peterson once again in center. That spectacular catch last night they're still talking about. Dodger bullpen has been taxed quite a bit lately. When we come back, Alana Rizzo will have that story. Dodgers and Rockies coming up next.
better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's, that's Chris Russon on his way out to the hill. And here is the lineup he'll be facing this afternoon, put together by Don Mattingly. And it's brought to you by Honda. Justin Ruggiano making his 17th appearance with the Dodgers, and he has been terrific against left-handed pitching, hitting 341 against him, and has hits in 12 of 14 starts. Jimmy Rollins, Howie Kendrick, Van Slyke at first, the bad back continuing to sideline Adrian Gonzalez. A.J. Ellis batting fifth, Guerrero at third, Heisey in right, Peterson in center, Alex Wood pitching and batting ninth against Chris Russin. Well, Chris Russin pitched against the Dodgers back September 15th, and you might remember that game back in L.A. That's the game that went 16 innings versus the Colorado Rockies. Nolan Arenado hits that go-ahead home run in the 16th inning. He got a no decision, giving up three earned runs over the course of that game. But his last start versus Pittsburgh, he had a career tying four walks, so he had trouble with his command. He's a type of pitcher where early in the count, he has a tendency to really make that quality pitch. But over the course of the at-bat, his ball has a tendency to find the middle of the plate. And let's see if that holds true today. And you know what? With these Dodgers facing him, what might not matter in the future, losing six of eight, but it matters right now that they're in a slump and they need to get this offense going. And on the mound today, when they have Alex Wood out there, he's going to have to set a tone because yesterday's first inning was a debacle. Russin, 28. Picked up uh, off waivers He's with the Cubs last year. A fourth-round pick out of the University of Kentucky. And here's Justin Ruggiano. In his last eight games leading off the game, he is six for eight with a home run, two doubles, and three singles. He's bounced out and has struck out. So he's been great against left-handed pitching, and he has been especially good leading off games against lefties. And away we go. The uh, Mets today have already beaten the Cincinnati Reds. Score eight to one at the Great American Ballpark. And so with the uh, race for home field advantage, of course, the Dodgers' magic numbers, too. They have to take care of their own business first. A fly ball into right field. First pitch right at Gonzalez, and we are underway. So it's Carlos Gonzalez in right field, Charlie Blackman in center, and Corey Dickerson in left. Around the infield, Arenado is at third base. Adamus is at uh, short. LeMayhew and Rosario on the right side of the infield, and rookie Tom Murphy is behind the plate. So one pitch, one gone, and Jimmy Rollins stepping in. Rollins, since coming back with that injured finger, 5 out of 11, 224 on the year, and he takes a strike, it's nothing in one. This is a Chamber of Commerce kind of afternoon in Denver, 84 degrees, barely a breeze. It is just a lovely day. Kendrick on deck. Rollins grounds to third. And it's past Nolan Arenado. And Jimmy Rollins is going to get at least a double out of the deal. They actually got to pass Arenado. I was about to say, Charlie, you said something that you don't hear too often. Pass <laughs> Arenado. And that ball was just right down the line. He was playing off the line just a little bit, and he just couldn't reach it. That just stays fair for Jimmy Rollins. Those are the kind of balls that were sneaking in for the Rockies yesterday in the first inning. That really put Brett Anderson in a hole before Arenado down there hit the grand slam. So Kendrick stepping in at 292 with nine home runs and 54 runs batted in. And he's had three clutch hits in the last couple of games. Van Slyke is on deck. Rollins being bird dogged by LeMayhew at second base and is grounded slowly to LeMayhew. Rollins will go to third. And there's two out. That'll bring up Scott Van Slyke. Van Slyke in the cleanup spot. And the uh, back issue that continues to sideline Adrian Gonzalez. Mattingly and the Dodgers hopeful that Adrian will be good to go tomorrow in San Francisco. Van Slyke with a half dozen home runs. And he takes a strike. It's nothing in one. So Van Slyke starting at first base today. Outfield deep and straight away. Dickerson and left the deepest. And it's inside. One ball and one strike. 
We'll keep you updated on the Giants and the A's game as that gets underway shortly. A.J. Ellis is on deck. And so eight games remain in the regular season. The lead over the Giants is seven, which makes the magic number two. It is conceivable that by day's end, the Dodgers can win their third consecutive Western Division title. In order for that to happen, they must win, and the A's must beat the Giants. Next stop, San Francisco for four. Then next weekend, the Padres are in town, and the postseason begins. Two balls and two strikes to Van Slyke. It's almost a foregone conclusion that the Dodgers will win the West, but it hasn't happened yet. But it's it has a bad taste in the team's mouth right now. I think kind of limping across the finish line. They have not played well and not played consistently well. They haven't been consistently healthy. And it seems like when Kershaw when Grinky pitch, they're a completely different team than when other guys pitch. So it's going to be a big test today for Alex Wood. Last couple of starts. Olsinger struggled last night. Anderson struggled. Now the 2-2. Swung on and missed strike three. So the Dodgers squander the double by Rollins. He's stranded at third. And no score as we go to the bottom half of the first as Alex Wood gets ready for his 31st start of the year. Two and a half behind the Dodgers long since eliminated. But Walt Weiss has put this lineup together. Brought to you by Honda. With Charlie Blackman leading off. And D.J. LeMayhew at second base. Arenado at third base. Carlos Gonzalez, the walk-off home run last night. Rosario's at first. Corey Dickerson, a terrific young player. Great speed. He can hit and hit for power. Then it's Christian Adamus at shortstop with Reyes still on the shelf. Tom Murphy catching. Chris Russin is pitching and batting ninth against the 24-year-old left-hander, Alex Wood. Alex Wood vying to be the third star in this rotation with the demise of Mike Bolsinger and Brett Anderson not doing well right now. And five out of his last six starts, if you eliminate a one and two-thirds outing where he was terrible, he has a 1.36 ERA in that start. So... He one hit these Rockies for eight innings at Dodger Stadium, and he's looking to repeat that. And here's Blackman leading it off and taking a strike, nothing in one. Blackman last night, a single and a triple and a couple of runs scored. But Mayhew and Arenado to follow. Wood in his last six starts has gotten only 2.3 runs per game in run support. So he's going to need some help today, and he's quickly ahead, nothing and two to Blackman. Mayhew on deck. 
Dodger outfield is straight away. Here's the pitch. It's high. One ball and two strikes. So a lot on the shoulders this afternoon of Alex Wood. A trying to get the Dodgers closer to the division title and B to secure a spot perhaps as a number three starter in the postseason rotation. But first they've got to get there. I think a lot of the postseason roster is going to be on who is performing well lately in the last month month and a half maybe even the last week. There are so many choices they can make. One and two to Blackman. In the left, an easy play for Ruggiano. Or are you aware of that as a pitcher? If you're Alex Wood or if you're Anderson Bolsinger, are you aware that you're battling to try to make that roster? I, th I think definitely when a young guy who has just come to the big leagues in the first few years, you're definitely aware of it because you've been battling your whole life to come through the minors and try and get to the next level, get to the next level. So a lot of your awareness is about competing with your, your teammates. And I think yes. I think there definitely knows there's there's a competition. DJ LeMayhew steps in at 305 with six home runs and 57 runs batted in. So you know there's a competition and at the same time you're competing against the other team and trying to stay consistent if you've been pitching well up to this point. <laughs> yep. LeMayhew often swings early in the count and takes inside one ball and one strike. We've gotten to hang out with Ned Coletti a lot more this year, and Ned always said that he loved the internal competition on the team. It's, it's good for everybody. It raises the bar for everyone. And it's just to come to work every day and to know you have your job compared to coming to work every day knowing you have to perform to keep your job, it's going to make you concentrate a little bit more. Well, it's a whole lot easier to look forward instead of looking over your shoulder all the time. Here's a 2 1 to second base, and Kendrick should have an easy play. So Wood retires the first two batters. Dodger infield has Guerrero at third base today. Jimmy Rollins at short, Kendrick at his familiar spot, and Scott Vance like giving Gonzalez another day of rest. Ruggiano, Peterson, and Heisey in the outfield, and A.J. Ellis, who has thrown out 27% of would be base dealers behind the plate. And here is Nolan Arenado. First grand slam of the season, third of the year last night. Chops it slowly to third. And it's a foul ball called by home plate umpire Stu Sherwater. Until the ball crosses the bag, it is the home plate umpire's call. Shearwater is just 31. He is from the baseball hotbed of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. He's calling a big game today. So Arenado, 40 home runs and 121 runs batted in. Leads the National League with 121 RBIs. Carlos Gonzalez on deck as Wood misses outside. Dodgers head to San Francisco for four beginning tomorrow. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night's first pitch will be a quarter past seven. Thursday, a matinee at a quarter to one. Tomorrow, Granky and Peavy. Dodgers, of course, would love nothing better than get to San Francisco and not have the games mean much. But they will for the Dodgers because they're in the race with the New York Mets for home field advantage and the Mets won today eight to one. They're all even in the loss column. And if they're even in the loss column the Mets have the advantage because they beat the Dodgers four out of seven during the regular season. So these games will count right to the end. To shortstop and Rollins will throw out Arenado at a one two three inning for Alex Wood. When we come back for the second, A.J. Ellis, Alex Guerrero, and Chris Heisey will back. Scoreless after one.
And now it's time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag SNLA Data Strong Fan. And you just might see yourself in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T Mobile. AJ Ellis will lead it off for the Dodgers here in the second inning against the 28 year old right hander Chris Russin out of Detroit. He's making his 21st start of the year. Ellis at 234. Last night, a double and a run scored in four at bats. Since the middle of June, Ellis has hit the ball as consistently as he has maybe in his entire career with the Dodgers. As he takes a strike, nothing in one. In his last 38 games, he's at 284. Six home runs, 15 runs batted in. Jay takes a strike and quickly it's nothing in two. AJ's always had a good eye and got a, just a mild debate going on there about where that pitch was. No balls, two strikes. Up the middle, Adamus to his left. Ellis on the throw takes. Rosario off the bag, but is able to tag out Ellis for the first out of the second. Of course, we're going to keep you up to date on the giant game. They are scoreless in the top half of the second inning in Oakland. Guerrero stepping in, making his 17th start at third base today. Of course, Justin Turner, they're trying to be as judicious with him as possible with his knee as Guerrero foul tips it. It's nothing in one. You mentioned that San Francisco Oakland game already in the second inning. Uh, that Oakland Park can play as a hitter's park in a day game, but I don't think you can catch this park as far as a hitter's park today. So that game will probably move a little faster than ours. Whack foul. On Friday night, the two teams combined for 11 runs and 18 hits. Last night, 14 runs and 25 base hits. Just underway in the second. Heisey is on deck. Some with that quick pitch. One ball, two strikes. Hitters just must love that. I think it's a weapon that not enough pitchers use. Even if you're not comfortable with throwing the ball like that, you can pick counts where you know you're probably going to throw a, a setup pitch or something, or just something to, to show the hitter a little different look. It doesn't have to be when you have to throw a strike. Into left field. That's going to drop for a base hit. Quickly over to cut it off is Dickerson. Guerrero will hold it first a one out single to left for Alex Guerrero. A lot of times that quick pitch just you know as a hitter you are timing just kind of the rhythm of the pitcher as he's getting his wind up so then all of a sudden all it takes is that moment where if as a hitter you're like oh it's coming on me just a little bit quicker not to say you'll miss it but sometimes you just may not square it up. Top of the second in Oakland the Giants have just taken a two nothing lead. Chris Heisey stepping in. Heisey and his. 31st game with the Dodgers this year. Well, he's played for the Dodgers. He's played at Oklahoma City for a time. He was in the Toronto organization. They had a big day on Thursday as the Dodgers beat the Diamondbacks six to three. No balls and two strikes. Giants with a pair in the top half of the second. And we're scoreless with one out and one on in the top of the second here in Denver. Jock Peterson on deck. Houston set. One ball and two strikes. Seattle has a one to nothing lead in Anaheim in the fourth inning. Angels of course lost Houston Street last night. 
Here's the one two. All right, two balls and two strikes. Astros with a two to one lead over the Rangers. They're playing in the seventh. Royals are shutting out the Indians two to nothing in the seventh. Cleveland's chances fading. Twins have beaten the Tigers seven to one. Runner goes. Pitches outside and stealing second base is Alex Guerrero. His first big league stolen base. Boy, talk about catching the other guys napping. Went first. He didn't even go first move. I was thinking he, the only way to see off the lefty was the first move, but he went kind of late. Didn't get the best jump. I think if that ball was thrown accurately, I think he gets him. But luckily for Alex Guerrero, it was thrown on the opposite side of second base, and he slides in easily. His first attempt. And he makes good. Heisey on three and two. And he golfs one into left center. Blackman is there. And here goes Guerrero to third, and he's going to make it. Standing up. Alex Guerrero is feeling some speed today. That's something that Alex Guerrero is known for, is that speed. He gets a stolen base in there, thinking, okay, deep fly ball. Center field and now he has to take a deep breath. I don't, I don't know. You know this one where just sometimes you just want to slide. You see Renicky letting him know to slide. I wonder if stopping or something he might have maybe aggravated something a little bit or he's just out of breath. Has run that hard here in this altitude. It's like wait a minute. Get the oxygen ready in the in the dugout. I may need that. He steals the base and goes to third on the sack fly. That's a sequence we've not seen out of Guerrero all year. Now Peterson with two out. Jock down to 211 and they're going to walk him intentionally. And go with Alex Wood instead. Giants have added another run three to nothing after an inning and a half in Oakland. So the Dodgers at this point. Have to take care of their own business. It's always a better story with a little tension. <laughs> I don't know if we want this much tension. Your definition of little and tension <laughs> are discussion points. Yeah. Alex Wood, seven out of 49, has one double and six singles. You're not comfortable until it's over when you're in that dugout. When you have that uniform on, you're watching these games. That, you know, you just. You know how odd this yeah. game can be. You know, you can scoreboard watch all you want. But you just go out there and just win the games. You don't have to worry about what they're doing. Wood slashes it foul. I mean, that's the one good thing that the Dodgers are in. If you're the team chasing the Dodgers, such as the Giants, you're really watching the scoreboard because they're going, okay, how do they do? Because we really re need to rely on those other teams for us to have a chance. The Dodgers ship has been wobbly the past week to 10 days. They've lost six of eight, seven of 11. It's down no balls and two strikes. But last month, there was a period of time where the Dodgers went nine and three and the Giants went three and nine. And from a game and a half lead to a seven and a half game lead in under two weeks. That has given the Dodgers a, a boatload of house money to play with. Really, in some ways, it doesn't matter what the Giants do today. Only if the Dodgers win, but because the Dodgers really only need to win one game in San Francisco. That's it's worth two points. Arenado better hurry. And Wood, and he throws it away, and the Dodgers get a gift. Guerrero comes in to score. And for a moment, Peterson was thinking about coming home. Instead, he pays for his sins and is tagged out. Now let's see if Adamus, the shortstop, is okay. An error by the gold glover, Arenado. Opens the door. Guerrero comes in to score. The Dodgers take a one to nothing lead. Let's make sure that the Rocky shortstop is okay. 
you got Don Mattingly out there talking with the umpire, wondering did he actually give him a wait, give him a chance to actually go to get back to third base. Watch, you'll see there. And as he's coming back with the throw, look at he had get it out of the way of the, the player, give him a lane to get back. So that's what they're talking about. Well, it looks like Peterson's knee got Adamus in the face. But the Dodgers take the lead. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Wood. On paper, not a bad idea, but you can see Arenado as he gets this. Alex Wood was not running hard, and I think that messed up Arenado. He was looking at Alex Wood more than just focusing on making the throw, and that's what made him launch it. But then here, another base running mistake over here by the Dodgers as that gets by, and you get Peterson rounding third base too much here. And they pick his pocket as he's trying to get back. That's one, took that's one you, have to be, you have to be very aware of when you're rounding the base and where the ball is. And the other night, Carl Crawford, base running mistake, was thrown out at first base after the base hit down the third baseline. Arenado caught Crawford napping. Base running has been an issue, and here's Carlos Gonzalez. It was his second career walk-off home run last night, breaking the Dodgers' hearts. A two-run shot over the wall in center off Yimmy Garcia. Gonzalez, 39 home runs and 93 runs batted in. Rollins coming in and throwing him out. So the first four have been retired by Alex Wood quietly. Omar, with Alex Wood and kind of the herky jerky motion, what's that compared to hitting off a guy that's smooth and looks like he's right out of the Spalding baseball guide? Well, when, when it's smooth, it, it allows you for your timing and the rhythm as you're watching him. Almost like, I mean, if you're hit at home and if you ever faced a, what they call like an iron mic batting cage where it's the arm, not where the circle and the ball is just coming out. But you can actually just kind of see the ball all all the way and get your timing. And as Alex Wood, you're looking, okay, it's hidden, it's hidden. Then all of a sudden it comes at you. And that affects your timing. Sometimes you're going, okay, he may not light up the gun at 91, 92, but it gets on you quicker because your timing's off. Rosario bounces to second, and Kendrick will throw him out quickly, two out. Because when he, when he one hit the Rockies in the eight innings and only took him 78 pitches. He only had five strikeouts, no walks, but it, nobody was really squaring him up. Right, and, and that happens with, it's, you, you see the ball, but your, your timing's off just a little bit where you're just not hit, getting it with the barrel. So far, I mean, that's an example of that last ground ball. The last two ground balls that we've seen from Carlos Gonzalez and Will and Rosario, they weren't on the barrel. They weren't hard ground balls. They were kind of off the end. Rollovers. Rafael Inoa is in the on-deck circle, and he's going to pinch hit for Christian Adamas, who took 
Jock Peterson's knee to the nose in a top of the second inning ending collision at third base. So we know it thought he was going to have a busman's holiday this Sunday. It's not going to work out that way. Corey Dickerson has been killing the Dodgers the first two games of the series. Dickerson has spent two stints on the disabled list this year. Most recently, plantar fasciitis. And in the short right center field, that's going to drop in for a base hit. And now he's going to try to stretch it into a double, and he's going to make it. So Corey Dickerson is now six for nine this weekend against the Dodgers. I tell you, Corey Dickerson, he just picks the pocket of the outfielders as they were getting to that ball. You know it's going to fall. You charge in, and you got to play it as if he's thinking about to. It looked like the outfielders weren't even expecting him to go, and you can't go at that. See, Jock, right? Kind of Jock, you got to run after. You got to hustle. Let's go get that ball. Corey Dickerson recognized that and just really picks their pocket, catches them sleeping, and takes advantage of it. You know, that's another one of these course field doubles. You got it. The outfield so deep. That in most parts you don't have to play as deep for any number of reasons. And here it drops in, and what would normally be a single turns it into a double. And this is a place where doubles turn into triples. And this is why Coors Field becomes such a difficult place to play, either the home or the road team. So here's Inoa pinch hitting for Adamas out of the game with an injury. Inoa, the one time Dodger farm hand. And that is a fair ball. And with that, the Rockies quickly tie it. It didn't take long for Anoa to make his presence felt. A two out bloop double for Dickerson. A base hit for Anoa. The Dodgers and Rockies are tied at one. A couple of bleeders and a little too much assumption in center field by Jock Peterson really sets up this run. Coors Field makes you play deep, but then you can't assume that the runner, batter runner is going to stop at first, and then you get this kind of little bleeder down the first baseline. Umpire Joe West puts the right arm up and then has to switch to the left arm as he checks it going into the corner. And that ball is definitely fair. So the Dodgers score a run at the top of the first on a gift. And now here come the Rockies with two out, nobody on. The Dickerson double, the Anoa double. Murphy's going to be intentionally walked, and Chris Russin's going to bat. Well, for me, for me, it really just stems on not keeping that ball to a single. Yep. I mean, that was the key there. You had an opportunity to just keep that ball to a single off Dickerson, and possibly you might have second and third right now. Instead, a tie game and first and second and two out. And Russ is not a bad hitter. Nine for 43. He's got a home run and four runs batted in. Coming into this series, the Dodgers were 11 and 5 against the Rockies. Now they're in danger of being swept by Colorado. In the final full week of the season. Russin tries to bunt for a hit and misses. So Alex Wood in his last six starts three and three in a 286 ERA and has received precious little run support. Rockies have tied it at one in the second. Kendrick will throw him out. Who was getting over there at first? We saw that, but also Kendrick slipped on that. That was that could have been a disaster right there on that play. Lucky for the Dodgers, they got out of it. One run, two hits, one left.
last night. A walk-off home run from Carlos Gonzalez sent the Dodgers to defeat. And I tell you what, if you like the long ball, these two teams are teams to watch in this park and also at Dodger Stadium. Most home runs in the National League. You can see the top two teams are the teams playing right now. The Mets, two more today, 172. The Nationals, 170. And also some fireworks in the Nationals dugout. Jonathan Papelbon going after Bryce Harper in the dugout. And the Cubs, another playoff team 166 as far as the long ball guys that's your cold Coors like cold hard facts and the cold hard facts are that the Washington Nationals are a Thelma and Louise and they have gone off the deep end what a disastrous year that turned out to be I, there was a survey of about 110 15 quote unquote experts who put their names to the preseason predictions every last one of them had Washington winning the National League East whoops Jonathan Papelbon in that little skirmish with Bryce Harper in the dugout where they were actually physically his altercation. And Harper comes out of the game. Papelbon goes out to pitch. The next inning gives up a two-run homer. <laughs> the season can't end fast enough in Washington. <laughs> Ruggiano leading it off. And Good, luck to, Matt Good yeah. luck to Matt Williams in his post-game scrum. But doesn't that also just take you back when, when they were talking about with Strasburg and the innings oh, limitations yeah. Remember when, when they, they thought, that? oh, that we're going to be champions year in and year out. Right. You can't assume <laughs> that. I mean, that's we, we talked about that. I mean, it's even it though on so paper it looks like they win. should. It, it is, is right. so hard to win. One ball, one strike to Ruggiano who takes inside. What the Atlanta Braves did for all those years was a 14, mm -hmm. 14 in a row division titles. It just, it's just unheard of. Doesn't happen. Glavin, Maddox, and Spoltz don't hurt any. No. It's like Zito, Mulder, and Hudson. Yeah. They forgot about them in the book. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't make that chapter. Moneyball written by Anonymous. <laughs> we're going to write a book on the 14 division titles by the Atlanta Braves, and we're going to forget Maddox, Glavin, and Smoltz. <laughs> right. Ruggiano, Rollins, and Kendrick to hit for the Dodgers in the third. Giano takes inside. Counts full, leading off in the third inning. Tied at one. And you got to tip your hat then to John Sherholtz and Bobby Cox. Those years. Bobby, of course, in the Hall of Fame. A leadoff walk to Ruggiano here in the third. Here the Dodgers are on the verge of winning their third consecutive. Never been done in franchise history. Just 125 years. So they have 11 more to go after yep. this. If they're a little short, they're able to clinch it. <laughs> I mean, think about that, right? <laughs> you go, ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> 11 more. Now Rollins stepping in. He doubled in his first at bat. Takes high. The most unfair rap that the Braves and Bobby Cox would take. Well, they only won one. Well, you have to be in it to win it. And they were in it more often than anybody else. And once a seven-game series happens, anything can happen. Rollins with a base hit into right, and Ruggiano will hold at second base. The Dodgers are in business with first and second and nobody out. Mm -hmm. Rollins swinging a hot bat. We talked about going down the stretch, how you want guys to start getting into the rhythm, going in. You know, we keep talking about the postseason until they finally get there. But going in the postseason, especially veterans and Rollins, he understands, understands this position, understands down the stretch, starts swinging the bat really well. The other day was three for five. Here he is, two base hits in this game. And he told me today, actually. I saw him in the locker room, and he's like, you know, he goes, I'm feeling kind of sexy today. You know, well, watch me. Watch me today. Here it comes. You know, I'm in there today. So uh, it's good to know I, I that, told that, him, All word, right. that word translates into hitting. Yeah, I go, show me something today, and I'll talk about it. And so far, he's done a good job. Two base hits. Howie Kendrick takes high and away. So we're checking out this morning, Rollins. And he's, he's holding on to something in his right hand. And so I said to him, uh, you working on, on your index finger? He said, no, it's lip balm. <laughs> Says it's dry here. And it was lip balm. If you're not from around here and you're just in for a couple of days, Denver can mess you up on any number of levels. You're wondering, why can't I sleep? <laughs> why am I 
nose so dry. My mm. lips are dry. I feel thirsty. I feel lethargic. Huh. And Jimmy was exercising his lip balm in his right hand. So the finger is fine. That's why he told Nomar he's feeling sexy. <laughs> yeah. Got the lip balm. One and one. And uh, Russ is going to step off the rubber. Kendrick bounced to second base in his first at bat. How he didn't play last night. And was two for four on Friday night. Two balls and a strike with Van Slyke on deck. Giants three to nothing hitting in the top of the third in Oakland. Kendrick with nine home runs. Drills a base hit into center field. Ruggiano will be held at third by Renicky. Throw coming home on one hop. Dodgers now in business. Bases loaded and nobody out for Scott Van Slyke. Uh, Howie Kendrick hit that ball so well. And he hit a line drive that Ruggiano had to freeze on that ball. Wasn't sure if it was going to reach the center field there. So that's why he didn't get the best jump and had to be held up at third base. So Kendrick who missed 34 games with the hamstring. He's at first base. Rollins at second Ruggiano at third and here is Van Slyke who struck out swinging in his first at bat. Tied at one the Dodgers with a glorious opportunity to take the lead. Nothing in one to Van Slyke. Ruggiano Rollins and Kendrick. Dodgers is a team 251 this year with runners in scoring position. But since the end of June they're hitting barely 250 with runners in scoring position in fact 223. So it's been an issue. A.J. Ellis on deck. Little chopper. This could be trouble. Throw to the plate. And safe. So the ball traveled maybe 15 feet. Good enough for a run. See if the Dodgers gonna, take a two to one lead. See if they're going to have a look at this one. I mean, good job by Ruggiano. Good hustle. The only play they had for the was with the glove to flip that. Let's see if Ruggiano gets in there. Oh yeah, he definitely, dropped. yeah, he's safe. So the ball was never held cleanly. Van Slyke gets his 30th RBI on a ball that travels about 15 feet. So the Dodgers take a two to one lead. Steve Foster, the pitching coach, now going to Try to settle the rattled nerves of Chris Russin. I wonder if the Dodgers maybe, you know, after the first time through, seeing Russin. You know, he went through the first time through the lineup, just two for eight for the Dodgers when they saw Russin the second time around so far. All four guys have been managed to reach base. Ruggiano began the inning with a walk. Rollins a clean single to center. Ditto for Kendrick. And the Van Slyke bleeder. So the Dodgers lead it two to one. Meanwhile, the Giants have tacked on a couple of more in the third inning and lead Oakland five to nothing. The third inning has not been a happy time or place for Chris Russin this year. His earned run average in this inning is almost 12, 1170. As Ellis takes outside, one ball, no strikes. Well, the Giants are routing the A's five to nothing in the third. Dodgers trying to do the same to Colorado here. 
Ellis, a roller up the third baseline. Tough play for Arenado. He's got one play. Firing a fastball into the glove of Rosario. In to score is Rollins, and the Dodgers score a second run here in the third and lead it 3-1. to one. There were parts of yesterday's game where Brett Anderson got bled to death, and right now the Dodgers are just trickling away at the Rockies. Scott Van Slyke's chopper, now A.J. Ellis with his chopper. That's going to pick up an RBI. If that ball's hit hard, our Arenado probably comes home, and they go 5-2-1, or 5-2-3 for a double play, but as it's hit softly, you get the RBI. Rosario over at first base by trade, a catcher. Had to catch the fastball thrown by Arenado. Second and third, Guerrero, who singled in his first at-bat. As the infield in, takes a breaking ball high. One ball, no strikes. Dodgers looking to salvage one of this three-game series and cut their magic number to one. One ball, one strike to Guerrero. Tomorrow in San Francisco, Granke and Peavy first pitch a quarter past seven. Kershaw and Bumgarner on Tuesday. Bolsinger and Leak on Wednesday. And Thursday, a matinee at a quarter to one. Brett Anderson and Tim Hudson. Here's the 1-1. One, one. one ball, two strikes to Alex Guerrero. I'm still scratching my head about what was going on in Washington today. The franchise player and the closer get into a a brouhaha. It looked like Bryce Harper made an out. Right. And he was, the, and he was jog, jog kind of jogged down the first baseline and then just kind of made the easy right turn before reaching first back to the dugout. And Jonathan Papelbon actually started to kind of give him a little lip service. As soon as he started to make the turn, he hadn't even reached the dugout yet. And then by the time Papelbon gets the, or Harper gets the dugout, they're almost nose to nose, and they ended up pushing and shoving. Here's the one-two to Guerrero. That's a little comebacker, and the Dodgers will score the third run of the inning on three bleeders that never get out of the infield. Guerrero with a fielder's choice RBI, and the Dodgers with their third in the third and lead four to one. And They're living ballpark, right today, aren't they? In a ballpark that's known for giving up the home run, these balls have none of them has gone 90 feet, and probably the total of all of them is somewhere around you know 120. <laughs> yeah, the total of the three of them is a fly ball to left. 60, 60, and short of that. Yeah. Sometimes you need those. ground balls. Sometimes you need just the bleeders, and then now you need that big one. Heisey flied to center in his first at bat. The big one was Chris Heisey's grand slam when he rescued Clayton Kershaw's five inning outing the other day. That turned things around. It was not the kind of year that Heisey envisioned as he squares to bunt. This was the other day, a week ago today. After being an eyewitness to the Don Mattingly Clayton Kershaw discussion about being removed from the game, Chris Heisey took some of that energy and put it into that ball, hit the grand slam, put the Dodgers up in a big way, and put that game away. Heisey's first home run with the Dodgers as he takes outside. So he comes to the Dodgers, figures, okay, I'll probably be a fourth or fifth outfielder. Spends most of the year at Oklahoma City, up and down, up and down, up and down. And he ends up in Toronto. And he comes back to the Dodgers, and he comes up with that grand slam. Yeah, I was looking at that. I think what, what he got traded for in the offseason. He was up and down nine times during the course of the season. Designated for assignment. Then gets released. And goes to Toronto. Then gets traded for back to the Dodgers. And then grand slam. And here he is. So, 
What goes around comes around. Gonna have a lot Precisely. of stickers on his. <laughs> I'm hoping he gets his, his frequent luggage. flyer miles. <laughs> Three and two to Heisey with Peterson on deck. Hey Chris, bags in the lobby at 9:30. <laughs> Three and two with Van Slyke leading off third, and that is the third walk of the game given up by Russin in the second of the inning. Now Jock Peterson coming up. Peterson was intentionally walked in his first at bat. It's been a long inning for the Dodgers, been a long inning for Alex Wood to be sitting, but. He'll be coming out in the on deck circle and I used to like it when I had a long inning we got a lot of runs and one of the things that can get you loose again and get you back in the game is just get in the on deck circle and get the donut and start waving the bat around kind of and sitting in their dugout waiting. It's been a longer inning for Chris Russell. Takes the strike just Peterson nothing in one. Twenty nine pitches here in the third. Wood is on deck runners at the corners three are in and Peterson fouls it off to the left it's nothing in two. Peterson this year. Leads in one stat he could probably live without. Percentage of swings and misses. Almost 36 percent of his swings he's come up empty. One of the reasons why. He has struck out 167 times. Now the 0 2. Second strike out of the game for Russin. That ends the inning. But the Dodgers come up with three on three hits and leave two after two and a half. Dodgers four and the Rockies one. Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by the 2015 Jeep Cherokee with an EPA estimated 31 highway MPG. It's the perfect choice. Visit Jeep.com today. Just a picture perfect Sunday afternoon in the Mile High City. And Alex Wood bathing in sunshine and a four to one lead. He'll be facing. It's Chris Russin coming out. Charlie Blackman is leading it off. Blackman fly to left in his first at bat. The Rocky bullpen is quiet. Blackman fly to left. Takes a strike. It's nothing in one. 
Blackman at 289. 17 home runs, 56 runs batted. In. And he drills one into right center field. Heisey coming in and making a terrific diving catch. Chris Heisey robbing Blackman of a hit. Talk about the depth of the outfielders here, and that would set up an outstanding catch in front of you. A lot of outstanding catches normally in the big leagues for Carl's cam replay are over your head. But here at Coors, as deep as you have to play, a lot of these can happen. Outstanding play, outstanding jump, outstanding route by Chris Heisey. And the first out of the third, D.J. LeMayhew coming up. LeMayhew bounced to second base in his first at bat. LeMayhew, most of the year, has been among the top 10 hitters in the league. 305, six home runs and 57 runs batted in. And at six feet four inches, he is the tallest second baseman in the game. A little bit of trivia about him he is the only Rocky this year to hit in every batting slot. Wherever they put him, he's hit well. 166 base hits. Rockies lead the league in runs scored, 697. Dodgers are ninth in the league, having scored 635. Ah, but Walt Weiss in his pitcher. Dead last. Thus, they're 25 games under 500, despite as a team hitting 266. There's a strike. And you think you take two Lewitsky out of this lineup, and all of a sudden it's going to look anemic, but the first six hitters in this lineup are some of the best in the National League as far as the first six Blackman, Mayhew, Arenado, Gonzalez, Rosario, Dickerson. The six hitter is hitting three, 327. And that's going to drop in for a base hit for D.J. LeMayhew. It's a one-out single to right. Now here's Arenado. Bounced to second in his first at-bat. I always was wary of a guy that failed on defense a little bit for his next at bat and when he threw the ball away that you know cost them a run first pitch I was like you know these guys they come up there with a little more anger a little more intensity and just be careful on the first pitch yeah you want to atone for your mistake yep takes under the knees one ball no strikes Arenado with his 40 home runs second in the National League tied for fourth in the majors he is the seventh Rocky all time to hit 40 or more in a season. And the last one to do it, Todd Helton in 2001. So it's 2 0 to Arenado. Here's the great Todd Helton's number retired. What a great all around player he was. Outstanding defensively, could hit. Hit for power. Played pretty near every day. Arenado's in pretty good company with Mike Schmidt. The only major leaguer who's won a gold glove, led the league in RBIs, and hit 40 home runs. Three years into his career. Carlos Gonzalez is on deck. There's just not enough Willine Rosario jerseys to go around. Arenado takes a walk. Oral here in Colorado, we've touched on it. If you're going to miss, I'd rather miss down there, right? That borderline strike. The lower half. Yep. What I really love about Alex Wood is he continues to pitch even when he's lost his release point a little bit or the inning starts to get away from him. He does not turn into a thrower. And I think that's why he's a really good pitcher. He doesn't 
doesn't get rattled by the situation and all of a sudden think harder is always better. He still believes that, you know, make my pitches, believe in location, not just get all anxious and get all the adrenaline and go harder, harder, harder. No, he's going to keep trying to make good pitches. So here's Cargo with his 26th home run after the All-Star break last night, his 39th of the year. 14 of Cargo's 39 home runs this season have come in the seventh inning or later. And there wasn't much doubt about it at the moment of impact last night. A walk off home run off Yimmy Garcia. And so now Gonzalez is the tying run at the plate with one out here in the third. A.J. Ellis sheds the mask and barely has to move. Catchers this season with 50 plus starts or more. There's only a couple with no errors and A.J. Ellis is one of them. I still find it fascinating how a catcher sitting in a crouch. The ball goes up. How they're able to track the ball to the right to the left. In out and in that case it was right on top of the plate finding the trajectory instantaneously and then having to shed the mask. If you take the practice of them if the ball's coming down in your area and you're the catcher there's only a few things it can do and you just learn what it's going to do. But I could see being the, the first time you do it or the first 50 times you do it it, it would seem like you'd be lost. Here's Rosario with two out. He bounced a second in his first at bat. It's a lot easier for them to practice nowadays with those jugs machines that they can point them straight up and just keep feeding balls into it. The other thing too is they're able to see the ball hitting the bat at the as the hitters swinging through the zone. All of that. In a split they just, yeah, and they just kind of see. Okay, did it? You know, was it put in play or was it? You know, kind of hit underneath and nicked. And they go. And they turn around a lot of times though they don't always see it well, sometimes they have to turn around and you, you always hear guys yelling at them to help them out say mm -hmm. where it is. But it comes with experience. So AJ Ellis without an error this year. Rosario at 262 with six home runs 27 runs batted in. Here's a guy that. The Ground ball in the hole into left field for a base hit. On his way home is LeMahieu without a throw. So Rosario with an RBI single, his 28th of the year. And the uh, Rockies are within 4 to 2. Well, you feel like there's going to be more runs in the game for sure when you're playing at this ballpark. And if you're Alex Wood on the mound, when this ball finds a hole, it's now all about finding a way to limit the damage for the Rockies. Fred Anderson yesterday had some tough luck like that. Ball's finding the holes, but then Arenado hits the grand slam. That's the blow you're trying to stay away from. You know you're going to give up some runs. You just got to limit the damage. Now here's Corey Dickerson. He's been nothing but a nuisance to the Dodgers. This weekend, he's doubled and scored a run this afternoon already. Two for four last night. Dickerson was the one who was robbed by Jock Peterson in the eighth inning last night. And he had three hits on Friday night. It was a triple short of a for the cycle. So Dickerson at the moment. Is it 327? Two balls and no strikes. That ball that Jock caught off of Dickerson the other night was probably the longest route that Jock's had to run this year. It was a well hit, kind of lazy fly ball, looked like it was going to be right in the right place and spinning away from Jock because a left handed hitter hit it into the left field gap. But he was able to catch up to it. One of many spectacular plays turned in by Peterson in center field in his rookie season. Two balls, no strikes. There's one, two, and one. 
to Dickerson who has eight home runs and 26 runs batted in. Staring off into the distance looking into the crowd but not gazing and not thinking he was grinding on how do I want to get back in this count in this 2 1 pitch. Two and two. In the bottom of the fourth in Oakland, the Giants a five to nothing lead. Dickerson this year has had to deal with a rib fracture and plantar fasciitis of the left foot. Here's a guy who you would think. With all the skill he has, he's got a chance to be a big star. They got some hitters here, there's no question about that. The 2 2 swung on and tipped into the glove of A.J. Ellis, and that'll end the inning. But the Rockies come back with a run on two hits and a walk, leave two. We head to the fourth, Dodgers 4 2. Of the regular season at Dodger Stadium, and it's going to be Denny's Friday Night Fireworks. On October the 2nd, take your place on the field for a fireworks show featuring a salute to Hispanic Heritage Month. For more information, go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. So after three innings of play, Dodgers with a 4-2 to lead, and Alex Wood will lead it off. After intentionally walking Jock Peterson, in the second inning with two out. Wood did a little number to third base. And the gold glove winning Nolan Arenado on an easy play, too easy a play. Overthrew the first baseman. The round to score was Guerrero, and that got the Dodgers their first run of the game. So Wood 0 for 1 since first pitch is inside. One ball, no strikes. Oakland failed to score in the bottom of the fourth. They've gone to the fifth. Giants five to nothing. The Dodgers with that magic number down to two, a seven game lead over San Francisco with eight to play, including today. One ball, two strikes to Wood. Has a double and six singles this year. It's two and two. So four in San Francisco next Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The Dodgers are at home with the Padres. 
And that's the end of the regular season. Three and two to Wood. Who has not walked all year. In the right. Gonzalez going back. And it's off the wall. And Wood will go to second base after Cargo bobbles it out there. For a guy who has a herky jerky delivery, that was a pretty smooth swing with the bat. That was a really good swing. And, he, and that ball was just carrying. I mean, he hit it well. And he, it was interesting. He thought he was the way he looked at Gonzalez. He was paying attention to Carlos Gonzalez out there and right. He hits that ball. And he thought, okay, he's got a beat on it. He's going to catch that ball. You see, Gonzalez looks like he has it. And then it goes over his head off the wall. And. At first, Alex Wood was just going to take the single, and then when that bobble, that's when he ended up going to second. See there how he kind of stuttered. Thank you for using the bare hand yeah. out there, Carlos. Ruggiano fouls it off. Right there, Ruggiano was trying to drive the ball, but he was also trying to hit that ball to the right side. And the ball was on the outer half. He took the swing trying to drive it, and that's the approach you're supposed to be taking. You get the guy in second base with nobody out. Well, the Dodgers with a 4 2 lead, a chance to tack on another. And Ruggiano bangs with it right to the shortstop, Inoa. And that is the first out of the fourth. Jimmy Rollins is two for two. Has doubled, singled, and scored a run. We Dodgers know with six hits to go with those four runs. Colorado has two runs and four hits. We know this ballpark gives up home runs. Also gives up triples. He's got a chance for a cycle. Mm -hmm. He's got the single and the double. Mm -hmm. And he told Nomar he was feeling sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing sexier than a cycle. Well, <laughs> Rollins 292 is a right handed hitter. <laughs> His lips are looking really good today. <laughs> Not dry. You better review that story, Charlie, for the people that tuned in a couple innings ago. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> leave it hanging. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> what we can say for certainty is that Rollins has been a better hitter from the right side than the left side this year. And his right index finger is fine. <laughs> Carl Crawford, the leader of the pack with three base hits among active players. Reyes is now here in Colorado, and there's Jimmy Rollins, third on the list. Each your own Granderson behind them. Crawford with the uh, day off today and a strike to Rollins <laughs> and it's two and two. The rarest hit in the cycle is the triple and that's the hardest part of it. Jimmy's knows how to do it. So does Carl. And my guess is there are probably more triples hit in this ballpark than any other. Here's a two two ground ball to short. Rollins retired. And Wood is still at second base with two gone. And Kendrick coming up. How he's got a single that a run scored. He's also grounded out. Van Slyke on deck. Kendrick, nine home runs, 54 runs batted in. Earlier, Alana was talking about how the Dodgers and the Rockies lead the National League, each with 180 home runs. The Dodgers have eight different players with at least 10. Kendrick has nine. Balls and two strikes. And that was one of the big questions coming out of spring with the loss of 
Matt Kemp and Hanley Ramirez. Where would the power come from? It's been equally distributed throughout the lineup. As the Dodgers and Rockies each have 180 home runs to lead the National League. Gonzalez leads the pack with 28. 0 oh and 2 to Kendrick. And now he's been an outstanding hitter in the clutch for the Dodgers all year. I think sometimes clutch hitters and simple swings go together. Usually clutch hitter means you're going to be hitting off of the big arms coming out of the bullpen. You're going to have a little shorter swing. 354 with runners in scoring position. Also a good mental approach, no more huh? Because you don't get too anxious in those big situations. I, I think, you know, I'm a big fan of the, the average of runners in scoring position. And for me, I th because I think it can kind of reflect some of that mental approach. And some guys, just when they're out there and they see there's like, that's my guy. I'm supposed to knock that guy in and find the ways to do that. That's that impresses me with guys that have a high average in those situations. To short and oh, a backhand stab. Throws high and Rosario is able to get his foot down. And that'll end the inning. So the leadoff double for Alex Wood and then three ground outs to short. Nice play by William Rosario at first. After three and a half, Dodgers 4-2. Dodgers there will be food music autographs on stage interviews games and fun for the entire family all beginning at 2 o'clock and brought to you by Coca-Cola Time Warner Cable and State Farm for tickets go to Dodgers.com slash Viva so Alex Wood who led off the inning with a double and was left stranded out there a little late in getting his warm-up tosses in He will be facing Rafael Inoa, Tom Murphy, and Chris Russin. In the second inning, on a play at third base, a collision between Jock Peterson and the starting shortstop, Christian Adamas. We have an injury report on Adamas. He got the worst end of the co collision. Head and neck contusion and a right index finger contusion. Basically, on a play at third base, Peterson trying to elude a tag. His leg got up there and and got a good piece of the face of Adamas. So Inoa took over it short. And Inoa in his very first at bat. This is the play at third base. Trying to get back to the bag. That's where he took it. It looks like he also got spiked. 
So we know it when he made his first plate appearance in the second inning after a two out double by Dickerson. Doubled to right and drove in the Rockies first run. Former Dodger farmhand takes a strike and it's nothing in one. Dodgers four runs and six hits. Rockies two runs and four. They get two runs and five. And Anoa's two for two. Right now, Anoa's going. Well, Weiss, I think you should have started me today. I'm feeling it. He isn't expected to play. Fills in for Adamas and two knocks. Tom Murphy stepping in. He was intentionally walked in his first at bat. Of course, Jose Reyes has a bad Achilles, so he's sitting it out. But Thomas was his understudy, and then you now I know is the understudy for the understudy. Russin then Blackman to hit here in the bottom of the fourth. Into right center. Peterson. Makes it look easy. Boy, if ever there was an outfield made for a center fielder, this is the place for Jock Peterson. There's a lot of room to roam out there. And he ran kind of a J route on that one, but had plenty of time with that arcing fly ball to get under it. Well, made the great catch last night. What was it in May or June when he made that game saving catch in San Diego? Robbing Justin Upton to end the game. It's a good thing Van Slyke is 6 5. Uh, EY over there at first base, first base coach Eric Young. He recognized you could hear his voice saying heads up heads up and then he gets in there and points like stay on the bag. And Noah was turned his back and headed back to the bag didn't see the trajectory of the throw. No balls in a strike. Russin bounced to second base in his first at bat and looking at. Third base coach Stu Cole. Now it's nothing in two. Or is there a particular spot when you see a pitcher or somebody square around that early? Especially if they do it with two strikes. Is there a particular area you're focused on as a pitcher? Like, is it down? Is it up? When they're Depends on what pitch selection I cited before, you know, I see the turnaround. Because I've already got the signal. But if he turns around super, super early and I can even judge the pitch, I'm probably going to go fastball slightly up. It might cut it in. Even though he's trying to bunt the ball to first base, if I'm as a, as a right-hander for me, I would cut the ball in on him. Because as you go out to bunt the ball, being a bunter also, you, you kind of read it's going to be a fastball, and you, you kind of moving it to a place where he's got a chance to pop it up. A lot of people think high and away, but. A little bloop job into center field for a hit. There's two terms to describe that. One we can say on the air, that's the butcher boy, because you take the bat back and then you chop at it like a butcher. And the other? Can't go there. But it's a derogatory term that you might call somebody that you're upset that he did something. And that was well done. A lot of times you want to try and hit the ball on the ground, but here in Colorado, you might want to just try and bloop it over the infielder's head because there's so much room between the infielders and the outfielders. And so the Rockies have a rally here in the bottom of the fourth, trailing four to two, and the difficult Charlie Blackman. It was 0 for 2 today, and now he squares the punt. It's a good one, and the Dodgers aren't going to be able to do a thing with it. 
The bases are loaded. They're reading that the Rockies have gotten two hits. They've scored a run. Now they have three hits and they don't have a run, but that's an outstanding bunt right there. Left handed pitchers usually fall off towards the third base side. It's a little harder to get a bunt hit over there. It's got to be an outstanding one, and that was one right there. Alex Wood had no chance. It was a perfect touch by Blackman. And you even had Alex Guerrero over there at third base. It wasn't like he was playing deep either. He was playing on the third base line. So. So he had that as well as the pitcher, as you mentioned, Oral, and still was able to get it down with no play. Well, Mayhew, a 300 hitter with runners in scoring position. And the bases are loaded. Mayhew takes a strike. It's nothing and one. Four for 12 this year with the bases loaded. Four two in the fourth to third Guerrero throws to second out at second on the first it's high Guerrero may have been better served yeah. to just come home that one you got to go home with especially with your momentum Brent taking you that way because that he had to make an awkward throw to throw across his body to second and that's why they couldn't turn that double play because of that awkward throw it wasn't a good throw to Howie Kendrick here your momentum's come right there just keep coming home with it see how he had to throw across his body and admit it left Howie in a very vulnerable position there as he had to feel that and try to turn that. So now runners at first and third with two out. And Arenado coming up. Well, you take the sure thing, you get the second yeah. out. Granted, Arenado's coming up next. Now you had you could get out of this inning if you just went. That was a chance at a five. Two, three, double play. For sure, it's a shorter throw to home. You're right on the momentum, and then AJ is not going to deal with a runner coming down on him like how he had. No, to. now and the other, and the other thing too is, even if you don't turn it, at least it's not a run. Exactly, but you're going to turn that one easy. Yeah, that's, that's so routine. Five, two, three. Yep, you're right. And now it's a four-three game. Walt Weiss, going out talking with Stu Shearwater. Precisely about what I don't know. I don't know if he was talking about is it something about maybe the neighborhood play at second base with Howie Kendrick. I only assume maybe thinking oh was he on base is it something we can go check. So here's Arenado who has bounced to second and has walked. National League leader with 121 runs batted in. And his 40 home runs. This year there have been three hitters in the age 24 or younger season with 40. Bryce Harper, Mike Trout, and Nolan Arenado. The last time there were three players, 24 or younger, with 40 home runs in a season. You have to go back 60 years, 1955, when young Willie Mays, young Ernie Banks, and young Eddie Matthews all hit 40 or more. And the hits just keep on coming. Three and one to Arenado. So far this game, I mean, here we are, we're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Talk about the Dodgers and how they're kind of in this lull and they're playing that way. I mean, defensively right now, they've let the Colorado get back into this game. They've got the four runs, but I'm thinking about that ball base hit to center field where nobody charges it hard, gets to second base. We saw that one where Alex Guerrero should have come home with it as well. We've seen some base running mistakes. Arenado, three and two. Just not very sharp baseball at all. No. Alex Woods out there grinding away and yeah. really different. Differentiating himself between Mike Bolsinger and Brett Anderson as far as outings lately and really showing that he can pitch out of jams. Yeah. And he just hasn't gotten a lot of help. Nope. 
So it's three and two to Arenado. It's not going to get a whole lot easier with Carlos Gonzalez next. Into left center field and deep. It is way back and it is gone. A three run home run for Nolan Arenado, his 41st. Now with 124 runs batted in. And the Rockies have taken the lead. Six to four. You give a team an extra out, and you make a few other mistakes. And Brett Anderson gave up a grand slam to Arenado after some seeing eye ground balls. And now Alex Wood, after almost pitching out of a jam and not getting the double play, Arenado gets to swing the bat, and he does it very well this year. And that's that's unfortunate because that's like you said, Alex Wood should have been in that position. You got to help him out a little bit, make some plays behind him so he can have those quick innings, get you back into the dugout to try to go out there and keep scoring some runs. And here you now find yourself down by two. Now here's Cargo, and the Dodgers have the shift on for him. And Noah, the single to left. Russin, the butcher boy, bloop into center. Blackman with a bun hit. LeMayhew bounces to third, and instead of coming home, a run scores. And then Arenado with the three run home run. So the Dodgers now trailing for the first time today at six to four. In some ways, you feel like you've given them four runs. The, the bloop to center that turns into a double because Jock kind of eased in on it. That three run homer, you probably should be out of the inning, even though you can't assume a double play. But with our eyes and the years that we've played, and Charlie, you've been around, that's a double play ball. That's Rollins on the first base side of second. So a three run home run for Nolan Arenado. 41st of the year. He's got 124 runs batted in. And the Dodgers trail by two as we head to the fifth. Calendar presented by 76 after the game today. The Dodgers head off to San Francisco tomorrow night. Granky and Peavy. Tuesday night, Kershaw and Bumgarner. Wednesday night, Bolsinger and Leak. On Thursday, a matinee. First pitch a quarter to one. Brett Anderson and Tim Hudson in the final weekend of the season back at Dodger Stadium with the Padres. Meanwhile, back at Coors Field. Mattingly's club is down two as we head to the fifth and Van Slyke leading it off and taking a breaking ball inside one ball and no strikes. Oakland scored a couple in the bottom of the fifth but the Giants are leading there five to two in the sixth. Van Slyke with a ground ball to third that's Arenado. And that's the first out of the fifth. Thank you. 
AJ Ellis coming up. 0 for 2, a fielder's choice and an RBI knocking in his 18th run of the season. That was back in the third. It was scoreless after one. Each team scored a run in the second. The Dodgers scored three in the top of the third. Rockies scored one in the bottom of the third and then came up with four in the home half of the fourth. The big blast, Arenado's three run home run is 41st of the season. Dodgers have lost six of their last eight and seven of their last 11. Frankly, their play has been reflective of the streak that they're in now. Here's the 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One your old saying, Charlie, from Bill Parcells? You are what your record says you are. You can try and couch it in a lot of different ways. You can look for what some people would call excuses or things that you're going to turn around. You've got to get up the next day and you've got to go win the next, that game. But... To that point and to what you're doing in the short term, it hasn't been good. Two and two. Still only a victory or two, depending on who it's against, away from winning the division, though. You're spending some of your equity. Ellis down on strike, second out of the fifth. Nomar, do you worry if a team limps into the playoffs, even though they still win the division? Yes. Yes, because I'm a I'm a you see a lot of teams. I think you see reflective of a lot of the people who go on to win the World Series. Sometimes those wild card teams that have been doing it, those that those teams that are battling right toward the end just to get into the postseason, so they kind of have that momentum, that fight all the way through, and then and then continue their run into the postseason, and end up winning it. I think you see that now. I think more now that there have been I mean, ever since the wild card was introduced, and ever since you have now that you've expanded that, where it's more you'll see. A lot of hot, it's about the hot team that wins it rather than just the best team that wins it. So it does worry you a little bit if you're kind of limping into the postseason rather than having that momentum of playing really good baseball all the way through. And Arl, you nailed it the other night talking about the season being a marathon. Then the last week, it's a mad sprint. It sure is. And right now, the Dodgers are tripping over their shoelaces. One ball, two strikes. And I'm interested to watch our lineups in the playoffs. Hopefully we get there. I don't that would take a major collapse, but just all the different pieces that we're using now with the expanded roster. In the hole, look at Inoa making the long throw, but Guerrero will beat it out. And a lot of the selections we've had to make down the down the stretch here because of injuries and trying to get everybody healthy and get them peaking at the right time at the end of the year. But you can't peak and get into a rhythm if you're not healthy. You gotta be in there. So Heisey stepping in, he's fly to center and he's walked. Well, you can't give away outs. The Dodgers have been doing that. Scoreboard says no errors today. But they've allowed innings to extend, and Nolan Arenado said thank you very much and hit a three run home run. That's the difference in the game now. 6 4 Colorado with two out in the fifth. Tommy used to have a thing called the Yellow Pages. The errors don't always tell you the whole story. The Yellow Pages were the finer parts of the game that we didn't execute. You didn't want to be on those Yellow Pages. Remember, Joe Ferguson was in charge of that. He was the eye in the sky a lot of times. Some of the early positioning of defenses, they found that it was a little easier for Joe to walkie talkie down into the bench to, to position the fielders from an aerial view. And he also kept track of the yellow pages. I was going to say, once upon a time, there was a phone book. <laughs> exactly. One and one to Heisey. Who's going to call it? Rosario. 
No runs the infield hit for Guerrero. We're at the halfway mark after four and a half innings of play. Rockies six, Dodgers four. Ball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. The time is short, but the savings are big at Toyota's clearance countdown. Going on now. In Oakland, the A's are hitting in the bottom half of the sixth inning, and the Giants have a 5-2 to two lead. And as you see here in the bottom half of the fifth, the Rockies on a three-run home run by Nolan Arenado in the fourth have a 6-4 to four lead as Rosario steps in against Alex Wood. Rosario smacks a base hit into right field. Boy, you just feel a palpable momentum swing here. And perhaps it started with what might have been a play at the plate. Alex Guerrero instead with the bases loaded tried to go for a 5-4-3 double play instead of coming home to the plate and getting a sure out. That would extend the inning. Arenado would hit a three-run home run. And uh, the Dodgers now on the short end of a six to four score as Rosario begins the fifth with a single to right. You know, Charlie, this is the kind of feeling in the dugout where you just feel like somebody's going to snap. I don't know if somebody's going to explode the bat rack after making an out. Somebody's going to be throwing their helmet or glove. It just the frustration is building of, and it's so frustrating when you feel like you're giving things away. When you've been so close to knocking the Giants off and now San Francisco's on the horizon and somebody in that dugout might be thinking you know what forget them forget tomorrow let's do it today and you're right it is palpable. I, I hear what you're saying but I or I think I, I was hoping they would have had that mentality a few days ago especially going into this series where you're going listen we win the series we got a team that we have had success all year long against slowly hit to second there's one and two so Dickerson, the speedy runner, bounces in the 4-6-3 double play. Kendrick to Rollins to Van Slyke. Watch this Morongo slow-mo cam, and there was nothing slow motion about this turn. Howie Kendrick got it to Jimmy Quick. Jimmy came across with a vengeance, trying to give some energy to the team and gun that ball over to first. Nothing routine there. A little anger in that double play. And a perfect feed from Kendrick. So now two out, nobody on. And here's Inoa. Two for two. He came into the game after Christian Adamas was injured on a collision at third base. He came out on the short end of a collision with Jock Peterson's knee. And that was back in the second inning. In the hole at short, Rollins with a terrific play, making it look easy. No runs and one hit. We'll go to the sixth. Peterson, Wood, and Ruggiano are due up.
tickets for baseball and some fantastic prizes like a one-year lease on a Mercedes-Benz C-Class, an LG 49-inch smart LED TV, a personal lawn care visit by the Dodgers grounds crew, season tickets for 2016, and much more. View all of the details on uh, next Sunday's festivities by visiting Dodgers.com slash fan appreciation. Jock Peterson to lead it off. Peterson has walked and struck out. Dodgers trail by two. As Peterson swings and misses, nothing in one. Jock Peterson, through the 3rd of June, was hitting 267 with 17 home runs, 32 RBIs, and a 393 on base percentage. Since the 4th of June, 176, eight home runs, 20 runs batted in, and a 315 on base percentage. So it has been a precipitous fall since the first week of June for Peterson. As lost as we've seen him at the plate, you know, it, it can get really mental as it continues. And that's the toughest part about here in the in the big leagues, at the big league level. And you get lost and and it just snowballs and gets bigger and bigger. This is the guy who made the all-star team. You're, when you're holes and you have holes in your swing, you don't know how to make the adjustment. And we always talk about making the adjustments here at this level because they get exploited. Mm -hmm. And they'll keep exploiting them until you prove you can make an adjustment. And at the minor league level, you might get three, maybe even four pitches to hit in at bat. If you run into that unbelievable pitcher that is hitting his spots that night. Maybe you get only one or two, but here you, that's about all you get in a big league at bat is one or two. And, and but I'll, the other thing too is, if if you're down the minors and you're struggling and you're and you're lost and you're getting exploited down there, it's not having the big same attention. <laughs> you're not in the yeah. spotlight, so you can, from a mental standpoint, go try to figure that out. First down of the sixth. Alex Wood will bat for himself. And it's always been a theory of the front office to, you know, not just bring up the young guy that's just always been on the rise. They want him to face those long-term difficulties at the minor league level. They'd love to see a major slump in double A, a major slump in triple A, so they can learn about how to get out of that and continue to grow as a hitter. And Wood is two for three. And there's nothing more maddening than to be Jock Peterson right now. Right. <laughs> and to watch the no, pitcher it, it's so true. go you're, two for two. You're right. You're, going, you're struggling. That's the then... professional side of my job. And I can't hit. And I got a pitcher that plays every fifth day. And, and making it look way too easy as he just takes a nice swing. Ball down. And he stays on it. Head right on the ball and drives it right back up the middle. So the one out single to center for Wood. Two for two in his last couple of bats. Got on the error. Uh, Arenado in the first one. But. And it looks like that was the last pitch that Russin is going to throw. Walt Weiss is coming out. He's going to make a double switch. Ben Paulson will take over at first base. Gonzalez German, the uh, right hander, has been warming up in the Rocky bullpen as Weiss is making his way to the hill, pointing. To the bullpen. Ruggiano is due to hit. Runner at first. And Ruggiano will be the tying run at the plate with one out of the top half of the sixth. Rockies leading the Dodgers six to four.
last night. Rocky bullpen, which statistically ranks 14th out of the 15 teams in the National League, 475 ERA. Yesterday, in four innings against the Dodgers, held them to no runs and two hits and struck out three. And so it's going to be up to uh, Walt Weiss's bullpen. Keep Dodgers off the scoreboard. Ben Paulson takes over at first base, part of the double switch. And Andre Ethier is going to pinch hit for Justin Ruggiano. Ruggiano was 0 for 2 and a walk and a run scored today. Ethier last night, a double and a home run. His 14th home run of the year and the 300th double of his career. He's a tying run at the plate. And he takes a strike, nothing in one. And Ethier talking to home plate umpire. Stu Showater didn't like that. It started off at the bottom of the zone, but then it fell out late. Watch the tail on this there. That was that's what he's complaining about going, oh, may it start off and then it fell out of the strike zone. One ball, one strike to Andre Ethier. Rollins on deck and Kendrick to follow. Sunglasses for hitters, a relatively speaking new thing. Did you ever wear shades when you hit? I couldn't. Pass Paulson into right for a base hit. Wood will now go to third base. And arrive there standing up. That was somewhat surprising. Well, the Dodgers have first and third and one out. The pinch single for Andre Ethier. Yeah, Alex Wood kind of gave that one where you kind of hesitate as you go on to second and then then turn it on as he gets there. He's kind of coasting in and says, all right, I think I can get over there as you haven't got to the ball just quite yet. Gets in. Gets over to third with less than two outs. Helping his own cause out. Playing hard. Running the bases hard. Isn't, that risky, base business, isn't it risky business trailing by two to do that? Not right now. I mean, I, he's going to, he actually saw that well. They, they were worried more about Andre getting the second than him getting the third. Rollins batting for the left side for the first time today. And it's the first and third out you don't want to make at third. Yeah. So there's one out on the board, so he went for it. He changes the at-bat right now for Rollins. Two runs is a pittance here at Coors Field. One ball, no strikes. Into short left. Dickerson calling off Inoa, second out. You're right, Charlie. I mean, that's you're here at two runs doesn't seem like much, but at the same time, you can't just assume those big innings. You got to find, still do the little things right, to, especially when you're down. Here we are. We're now we're getting in the fifth, getting kind of to those later innings. Can't just assume, well, okay, this is the inning we're going to put up three. This is the inning we put up four. Still just keep doing the little things to plug away so then that big inning can come. First and third and two out. Kendrick one for three. And now the shadows are going to be a pain for a while. A couple things happen in this inning when Alex Wood gets the hit for himself with one out. Don Mattingly showing some respect to him for the effort that he has made today and really saying this is not your fault where the scoreboard is. The other thing is Don and I don't think he and Rick Honeycutt want to go to the bullpen because of this ballpark and then be going into the San Francisco series not having the key pieces rested and ready to go for the Giants. So I think they wanting to get another inning or two out of Alex. And then part of it also is the relatively speaking ease with which you can score runs here. So you don't have to waste a, a pinch hitter so early. So all of those components in that equation. That's Wood at third. Ethier is at first. And on one hop to the second baseman LeMahieu. Wait a minute. Ball hit umpire Kerwin Danley. They're going to make Alex Wood go back to third. They're going to give first base to Howie Kendrick. Kerwin Danley explaining to Walt Weiss hit my foot. 
Walt Weiss might ask for a replay here because Kerwin Danley, just like a hitter saying it hit me, he might not know because he's trying to get out of the way. He raised his hand immediately. But the feeling, you know, the floppiness of his pants, he might just feel that and not the ball. <laughs> Either that or go to the tailor. <laughs> Dead ball, base hit, bases are loaded. So the Dodgers catch a break. So this is Howie Kendrick. Howie Kendrick's next inning going out there. It's like, hey, Kerwin, good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and now Chase Upley is going to pinch hit for Scott Van Slyke. We talk a lot about how it's hard to see as a hitter with the shadows. It might have been hard with, for Kerwin to see because of the shadows. He's got three kinds of light between he and home plate. Well, here's maybe one of those little momentum swings. Let's see what happens after Danley being hit by the ground ball to extend the inning. The Dodgers given an extra out to work with. Wood is at third, Ethier is at second, and Kendrick is at first. Six to four with two out in the sixth inning. Two balls and no strikes to Chase Utley. Utley since coming to the Dodgers 215 three home runs and eight runs batted in. Wood Ethier and Kendrick the base runners. And this must not be a very pleasant time for any hitter with the sun being where it is and being over at first base a face full of sunshine for the first baseman Paulson. Sliced foul and Arenado's going to run out of room. Be dangerous business being at first base over there with the sun peeking through the, the grandstand. Now the release point, Nomar, I guess, is in the sun. Most of the path to home plate is in shadow, and then you arrive at home plate, it's sun. Yeah, it's still. It, it's really tough. Anytime the shadow's crossing at any point, it's tough. Into center field and a long run for Blackman. He is there. He's got it. And that's going to do it. So for the Dodgers, no runs, three hits, three men left. And we'll go to the bottom of the sixth.
loaded and two out. Utley flies to center and Kerwin Danley was breathing a sigh of relief. Of course, Howie Kendrick batted ball hit Danley on the leg. Goes as a hit, extended the inning. The bases were loaded. And Kerwin, along with third base umpire T.J. Rayburn, both breathing a sigh of relief. The last thing in the world umpires want to do is have an impact on the outcome of a game, especially being hit by a ground ball. So the Dodgers have made some changes here as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Andre Ethier stays in the game in right. Chris Heisey goes from right to left. And Chase Utley takes over at first. Ruggiano's day is done. This is Tom Murphy leading it off. One ball, no strikes. Meanwhile, in Oakland, the Athletics are making it interesting. Giants are hitting in the top of the seventh, leading the A's five to four. If Oakland wins, the Dodgers could get the magic number down to one. If the Dodgers and Oakland both win today, the Dodgers will clinch the Western Division. Murphy, 0 for 1, and a walk, fouls it off. And it's one ball, two strikes. The plane would be a little lighter going to San Francisco if that happened. All the champagne that they're carrying with us. Not be on the plane. Well, if, uh, if the Dodgers win and, and the A's win. And a base hit in the left field. The leadoff single to left for Tom Murphy. That's something more than 200 bottles of champagne to waste. That has been packed away off in a corner of the Dodger clubhouse. I'll tell you for Alex Wood, the last three innings, Colorado Rockies have been able to get the leadoff runner on base. He's only scored once. Ben Paulson is the hitter. His first at bat came in part of a double switch. Chase Utley over at first base and absorbing a face full of sunshine over there. And a base hit into right center field. Murphy will hold at second. It's a nice job out there in right field by Andre Ethier charging that ball real hard. And Making the decision a lot tougher for Murphy. He busted on it, kept his speed up, and as the base hit goes out there, Murphy freezes there because of the line drive, but Ethier gets into your pitcher in a real hurry and gets into Murphy's picture. This time of day, Nomar, is there a place more difficult to play at first base than Coors Field? No. There, there isn't. This... And it, and it definitely changes over the course of the year. There's some months worse than others where the sun is setting, but oh, it can get over there and it's tough to see. Oh, that's a perfect punt. Utley gets over there and just is able to throw out Paulson. Or rather, Black. Jason's made that throw before, but as a second baseman, this one he had to make sure and it looked like he actually had some thoughts in his mind about keeping the ball down for Howie. He didn't he wanted to make sure that they got the out. And now LeMahieu with second and third and one out. And Mattingly's going to make a pitching change here. Pedro Baez is warming up in the bullpen. And he is being summoned. Pivotal moment in the game. Rockies with a 6-4 lead, but they've got two runners in scoring position with one out in the bottom of the sixth when we come back.
Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. Use promo code Blue Crew for free entry. Meanwhile, back in the Mile High City, Pedro Baez making his 49th appearance. Pitched two thirds of an inning last night, struck out two, and gave up a double. A 335 ERA, 48 innings, 59 strikeouts, and 253 is what opposing hitters are hitting against him. And all he has to do is get LeMahieu, Arenado, and Carlos Gonzalez with second and third and one out. Talk about being thrown into the deep end of the pool. You know, Noam, this is one of those situations that you talked about as the team gets into the playoffs that you want to be battle tested. You want to feel the intensity, and this is perfect for Pedro Baez. This is my, this is a situation he may be called upon in the postseason where you're going to have guys on. It's going to be a tight ball game, and you're going to need those strikeouts. You're going to need him to come in throwing strikes. Seventh inning stretch in Oakland. Giants five, A's four. Dodgers bring the infield about halfway in. LeMahieu, one for three and two runs scored today. 6-4, Diamond, or rather the Rockies. They've out hit the Dodgers, 11-10. And now a safety squeeze, throw to the plate, and he is safe. In under the tag of Ellis. Murphy comes in to score, 7-4 Colorado. Rockies might be in last place and they might be eliminated and they're one loss away from tying their all-time home loss record 35 and 46 but they are still putting it on the Dodgers they are not laying down Walt Weiss wanting to win this game for the rest of the division to make sure it's all played out fairly you know, and a smart play right there going okay you just get your relief pitcher in here the guy you're expecting to Strike a batter out and throw strikes and feeling comfortable. And it wasn't really just your straight squeeze because Murphy wasn't taking off as Pedro was about to deliver and had the momentum. But he was looking as soon as that ball just hit the ground, he took off. That was a working definition of the safety squeeze. It is now seven to four Rockies, first and third one out. And here is Arenado. Last time up, three run home run. Fastball inside. Dodgers have nine outs left in offense at Coors Field, and Walt Weiss is squeezing. That's a new theory. Well, the Dodgers are playing on their heels, and he's just kind of pushing them back a little bit more. Yep. I think that was as much of a psychological play as it was a an offensive play. Oof. Arenado got his money's worth, didn't he? Last night, a grand slam. And this afternoon in the fourth inning, our Arco top tier play, a three run home run for Arenado. He now has 41 home runs and 124 runs batted in. Says in the scorebook he's two for ten in the series. Two home runs, seven runs batted in. Gonzalez on deck. Off to the right and out of play. It's a loud two for ten. Oh. And Gonzalez, of course, with the walk-off home run last night. To this point in all three games, the Rockies have outplayed the Dodgers. Very accurate assessment. On one and two. Two balls, two strikes. You almost get a sense and don't want to sound too harsh. You know, one team is playing for the postseason and 
one isn't. And you'd be hard pressed to figure out which is which. Seven runs, 11 hits Colorado, four runs and 10 hits for the Dodgers. First and third, and one out, one in. Drilled into left field, that's going to be trouble. Except for a diving catch by Chris Heisey. A spectacular play, tagging and scoring is Paulson, but it's eight to four. It could have been a whole lot worse. That is Chris Heisey's second diving catch so far in this game. When he was over in right field, he made a tremendous catch in the third inning. And now coming up with another nice one. In left field. You see how prepared he is as a defender after the catch when he pops up and guns the ball directly to second base. There was no thought on where the ball should go. Back in the third inning, Heisey robbed Charlie Blackman. Here in the sixth, a line drive sacrifice fly off the bat of Arenado, who has now driven in four of Colorado's eight runs. Mattingly comes and he's going to get Pedro Baez. J.P. Howell is on his way in. Two in for the Rockies here in the bottom half of the sixth. They lead eight to four. Will be facing Jake Peavy. Frankie in search of his 19th win is ZRA one and two thirds. It's the lowest in baseball. Peavy making his 18th start. Tuesday it's Kershaw, Bumgarner, Wednesday, Bolsinger and Leak. Thursday a matinee at a quarter to one, Brett Anderson and Tim Hudson. And here is JP Howell. And it is eight to four, Colorado. Facing Carlos Gonzalez. High and in, one ball, no strikes. Well, you see why J.P. Howell has been brought in. A huge disparity, righties and lefties, against Gonzalez, who's 0 for 3 today. He hit the game-winning home run off Yimmy Garcia, the right-hander, last night. Justin Morneau in the on deck circle should the inning extend he'll be pinch hitting. There's Morneau. The Mayhew at first base is a legitimate base stealing threat. 23 out of 26 this year. And there he goes. Will they get him at second? Yep. 
picked off. Wait a minute. Do they call a balk? He's saying he stepped too too close to home as if he was coming home. Didn't step toward first. He's calling a balk, and that's the home plate umpire's call. That's a balk. <laughs> This angle, yeah, it looks like it's a balk to me. He pretty much almost stepped the home plate. Yep. I'll tell you what, though, it was a balk, but I do like the way you know, Chase, we haven't seen too up too often over there at first base, but he did a good job getting the angle, getting the ball so he can make a good throw over to second base. Well, there's nothing going right for the Dodgers at the moment. One and one to Gonzalez, who splits the seam of the shift on the right side, and in the score is LeMahieu, the third run of the sixth. It is now nine to four Rockies. A bloop single that turns into a double because we don't get it to the ball in the outfield quick. A balk. And then a ball that finds a hole through three defenders on the right side. Just leaves a bad taste in your mouth, whether you're wearing the uniform or you're sitting up here in the press box. And I'm sure the fans there at home watching. It's a tough one to watch. It is now nine to four. As Morneau takes a strike. At this point, this has been a nightmare trip to Colorado. Against a team that coming into play today is 25 games under 500. Drilled to right. And had home run distance, but well fouled. A's hitting in the bottom of the seventh. Giants five to four. Slowly hit to second. Kendrick will throw out more. No. And he managed just to keep his foot on the bag. Utley at first. Two more runs. Make it three for Colorado in the bottom of the sixth. They now lead it nine to four as we head to the seventh. SNLA data strong fan for a chance to be shown in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T Mobile. Here's Scott Oberg to pitch the top half of the seventh inning. And the Dodgers taking on water on this Sunday afternoon in Denver. Nine runs, 12 hits for Colorado, four runs, 10 hits, no errors for the Dodgers who have. 
nine outs to figure out how to come up with at least five runs. It's been a tough day at the office for the men in blue. He said they were taking on water. It's looking like altitude sickness to me. <laughs> Lightheaded. Wow. AJ Ellis delayed it off. Takes up and in one ball and no strikes. You get this thing clinched. It'll be a distant memory this series, but. Going to have to refocus very quickly when they cross the finish line. Well, the last thing in the world is they hit the road. Even before hitting the road, was it they'd go up to San Francisco and have those games actually count? Well, or unless something uh, untoward happens here or in Oakland today, at least tomorrow night will count. Well, actually, every game is. Winner elimination for the Giants with the magic number being two. The victory here for the Dodgers, even though it doesn't really matter in the Giants series, it does matter if God forsaken they get swept there, the Dodgers, and now you've got the magic number at least to one coming out of a sweep compared to two coming out of a sweep. So that's where really it could matter. You've got to find a way with Grinky and Kershaw going in San Francisco that they're going to they're going to win one of those two games. And Noah throws out Ellis for the first out of the seven. And as much as anything else, just leaving here feeling good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Now Corey Seager is going to pinch hit for Alex Guerrero. It doesn't feel real good right now, but it's going to feel really good when they win a game or two to win this thing. And they and there will be a refocusing and there will be a different energy. It's like they're they're winning the Indianapolis 500 under a yellow flag. <laughs> well, but they haven't gotten to the checker That's flag I was just about yet. To say, know? I, know I know the yellow flags up a long time. I know and it feels like that, but it just feels like a it feels like a race now that's under the yellow flag and it's going to end. Oakland failed to score in the bottom of the seventh. They've gone to the eighth. Giants 5 4. Seeger swings and misses. And it's nothing in two. Well, your index finger is going to feel a whole lot better when they quit putting the hammer to it. One ball, two strikes to Seeger. Corey last night with his first big league triple. Takes outside two and two. Seeger has been on base at least once in each of his 19 starts. This obviously not a, a start so that uh, record will remain intact one way or the other. Three and two. Jim Gilliam in 1953 in his first 24 starts got on base in every one of them. Seeger at 19 is second on the all time Dodger list. On three and two, he takes a walk. No, he doesn't either. Seeger can't believe it. Breaking ball three two looks like it's backing up and going to fall off the edge of the plate. Nice job of framing back there by Murphy. And Corey thought that that was going to hang out there, but it kind of hung him out to dry. And when you look back, as you follow that ball all the way in as a hitter, and then you see the way the catcher had to move that much yep. in his whole body, you're going, how are you calling that? He didn't hit his spot. He had to move that much, and you still call it a strike. That frustrates you as well. Yep. And then the flick of the wrist with the so-called framing is like, what do you expect me to do? Two out and nobody on. And Crawford batting for Heisen.
Carl Goff's a base hit into right field with two out here in the second. Now Jock Peterson coming up. Peterson today 0 for 2. An intentional walk and a strikeout. And Walt Weiss is going to bring in a lefty for Peterson. So Oberg's day is done. So Oberg's day is done. And Boone Logan is on his way in. He'll be facing Jock Peterson when we come back. MLB.TV Premium. Watch every out-of-market game live on more than 400 supported devices. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. Visit MLB.TV today. Boone Logan now on in relief. And he'll be facing Jock Peterson. Logan making his 58th appearance, an ERA of about four and a half. He's got 41 strikeouts in 33 and two-thirds in it. And primarily he faces left handers Which is what Peterson is. He was intentionally walked in the second inning. Struck out and bounced back to the box. A three run six has given the Rockies their five run lead. Crawford leading off first. Peterson takes a strike. And it's nothing in one. Top of the eighth. Giants five A's four. After today, seven games remain, and the next four are in San Francisco. Where the Giants, depending upon how this game ends up, and Oakland's game with the Giants ends up, will have to sweep the Dodgers. Or the Dodgers have to win one. One and two to Jock Peterson. Peterson, of all the hitters in baseball, leads Major League in swings and misses. About 36% of his swings, he's come up empty this year. One and two Crawford leads from first and it's low and outside two balls and two strikes. Jock with 25 home runs 52 runs batted in 19 doubles and a triple. 
I mean, you talk about that swings and misses. You say, okay, so who's number two, who's number three, and what are their stats? And it's Chris Davis, another home run hitter, and Chris Bryant. And they're right below him. But they're playing with 43 home runs and 110 RBIs and 26 and 98. Into right field. Gonzalez can't get it. Drops in for a hit. Crawford. Has a surprise visitor at second base and Enoa. Well, in some ways with Jock Peterson you worry about the swings and misses but you really should be worrying about the other swings where he's not hitting for a high enough average. Chris Davis is hitting 260. Chris Bryant's hitting 278 but Jock's hitting 209. Got a little contact out there but you know, just trying to make a play on the ball and Carl just happens to be wanting to stay on the base. Good thing Carl's got a big strong neck. Now Justin Turner's going to pinch hit. Turner getting the afternoon off until now. Had a couple of hits and three at bats and a walk last night. Scored two and drove in one. Turner at 291. Dodgers trail by five. Turner takes a strike. It's nothing in one. One ball and one strike to Justin Turner. Ian Thomas warming in the Dodger bullpen. Jairo Diaz in the Colorado bullpen. Into the glove of LeMayhew and that's that. No runs, two hits, two left. Seventh inning stretch. Rockies nine and the Dodgers four.
his day and for the last 19 years he's been the television analyst for the Rockies and he is hanging him up at the end of the season. He is one of those funny country boys and they had a big ceremony for him yesterday. Remember 1981 when the Dodgers beat the Yankees. He lost three games. He lost what turned out to be the final game. And I was downstairs and doing an interview with George and tears were coming out of his eyes. I mean, this is one of those moments that nobody has to live through if at all humanly possible. And it was a wonderful interview. He was speaking from his heart about the pain and anguish of losing three games in the World Series. And in those days, there were big old what they call portable tape recorders that you hung over your shoulder. They were about as big as a microwave. And it was, again, an in-depth from the heart interview and we take it upstairs to the press box and there was nothing on the tape. And here it is, what, 34 years later. I keep reminding him, he said nothing. <laughs> and for 19 years he said so much here. And he's really one of baseball's good people. He's going home after 19 seasons and this is his last weekend at home with the Rockies. And here is Ian Thomas to pitch for the Dodgers as we head to the bottom half of the seven. They've gone to the bottom of the eighth in Oakland. The Giants five and the A's four. I'll tell you what, those little tape recorders over your shoulder. You got a good workout just carrying them back and forth. So Back you had to carry your tapes. own then, or you didn't have an engineer? No, 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 no. Blue collar moment. <laughs> Corey Dickerson leads it off and fouls it off to the left, and it's nothing and one against Ian Thomas, the fourth Dodger pitcher of the day. Alex Wood, five and a third. Eight runs and 11 hits. Baez a third of an inning, Howell a third of an inning. Nine runs, 12 hits for Colorado. Dodgers four runs and 12, and a liner off to the left and out of play. And it's nothing in two. Dickerson has doubled and scored a run in three at bats. George and uh, Don Mattingly have been close friends over the years. The 0 2. Now off to the left and out of play. In fact, George was in Mattingly's office before the game today and heartfelt hugs as George came upstairs and it'll be the last time that Donnie and George will see one another for quite a while. So the Rockies nine to four. Giants five four over the A's in the bottom of the eighth in Oakland. Dickerson down on strikes first out of the seven. Rafael Anoa coming up. He is two for three. Didn't start today. There was a collision. At third base back in the second inning between. Jock Peterson and the starting shortstop Christian Adamas inadvertently Peterson's knee ended up in the nose of Adamas came out of the game and Noah inserted he's doubled and singled driven in a run and scored a run coming off the bench. Tom Murphy on deck. You guys have been through the wars and the team is not going anywhere in a hurry and you're trying to get some kind of energy going and it's seeming like like an impossible task. What's it like down there? What are these guys thinking? What are they feeling? And all right, looking ahead to tomorrow, but realistically you've still got six outs to do something, comma, but dot dot dot. On one and one to Anoa. 
to short. Rollins. Two out. The thing that's going on down there is frustration. I think when you're in this ballpark and you're now, you know, most of our lineup now is our fresh guys off the bench. We've pinch hit an awful lot, kind of moved to the, the lineup that faces right handers because that's the way the Rockies bullpen is mostly going to be. So those guys probably have a little hope in them right now and a little spring in their step about trying to climb back into this game. I think it's hurting a lot more for the guys that got hit four and are in there watching this. And a guy like Tom Murphy bangs one just foul. A guy like our one. starting pitcher, Alex Wood, that, you know, probably feels bad about his own performance, but feels like, you know, he didn't get an awful lot of support today. But this is a Dodger team, of course. It's lost now six of eight and seven of eleven. And you look, you're looking for. I mean, fortunately, they're trying. It seems like it feels like as we're the outside looking in, like they're looking for something to spark them, or they're looking for that one hit, or that just kind of sitting back on their heels, that waiting rather than going out there and being that person or doing it. And and, and you kind of see that just lull. We saw that I think all three of these games here in Colorado. Now you're going to go in there, and, and if the Giants pull it off, you're going to. The Giants are going to be riding high. Obviously, they're they're like game sevens for them. So they they got to find something to really get them in gear and get them going. If feel some sort of energy, you can't have that attitude. Oh, don't worry about it. Everything will be all right tomorrow. No, because you, you're living in the present tense, and it's not all right right now. Be interesting game tomorrow because if this game ends up the way it is and if the scoreboard is right and, and ends up in San Francisco five to four, a little more focus on Zach Granke's start nationally. He's going to be pitching for a Cy Young possibly and pitching to put the Dodgers in the playoffs. Murphy strikes out a one two three inning for Ian Thomas. We'll go to the eighth. Top of the order for the Dodgers coming up. Scott here with a look at the DraftKings game summary. Dodgers scored three in the third. That would be the offensive highlight for them. Nolan Arenado grand slam last night, a three-run home run this afternoon, and another RBI to boot. Dodgers' inability to hit in the clutch has cost them dearly. Colorado five for nine with runners in scoring position. Jairo Diaz making his 18th appearance of the season. In 15 innings, he has struck out 12, but he has walked six, and opponents are hitting 254 against him. 32,870 watching this one. Giants still hitting in the top of the eighth. Correction, they have now gone to the ninth. Leading five to four. Oakland unable to score a run in the bottom half. You know, in a season that Walt Weiss 
would like to forget probably real soon when it's over. You got to tip your hat the way he's got this team playing. The energy level and the strategy and the, they're actually coming to the house to play to finish this season as strong as they could here. They played three very solid games. And they're going to avoid the worst home record in Rockies history at least tying it. By winning today if they can do that. These fellows can hit 299 at home. First pitch. Ethier is thrown out by Anoa. One pitch, one out in the eighth. Rollins, two for four. You don't necessarily want to pin the rap on any one individual in any one game, but. There was a play by Alex Guerrero in the fifth inning when the Dodgers, rather the Rockies, had the bases loaded. And one out. It was a ground ball to third. He could have come home, gotten an easy force play, maybe a 5 2 3 double play. Certainly could have gotten the front runner. Instead, he tried to go 5 4 3, only got the runner at second base. A run came in, and then the next batter, Nolan Arenado, would hit a three run home run. And you look back on this game to me I'm wondering what you guys think that was the pivotal moment where momentum swung Colorado got the three run home run from Arenado and there you have it I, I think that moment's just been kind of indicative in this series to be quite honest with you I mean you're right you look at this particular game that was a moment and also that I think also started off with that that single slash that was a double to center field in front of uh, Jock Peterson when nobody came in and they ended up scoring on that. But this is the play you were talking about, Charlie, where instead of at least getting the runner out at home with a possibly, you know, 5 2 3 double play. But, you know, for me, you know, yeah, that's this moment in the game. But we've seen, I think, moments like that throughout this entire series where maybe it was just kind of a wrong thought a mental mistake a mental mistake on the base pass a me mental mistake out there on the field or just it ends up being about 75 percent of the right play right and you're you're not piling on when you're missing those little elements because those are things that championship teams do and big league you know expertise is expected to do and it's if it's in base running if it's in fielding if it's throwing to the correct base if it's driving the runner in from third with less than two outs if it's a pitcher on the mound that's not getting ahead in the count or not finishing off a hitter or not throwing strikes you just it, and when you do it more than once every six or seven innings or once a game when it, all of a sudden it's two three four times in a game it starts to it starts to look and feel and smell bad mm -hmm. it's been a lack of crispness yep. Two out and Kendrick coming up taking inside and I've always thought about like when I've talked about a teammate in a scrum after a game my quotes about him when the reporters were asking about my team or an individual on our team I always imagined the player was with me in the scrum and right now if our players were getting interviewed about each other they would have to be sensitive about that but also be honest and say you know what? If you ask Jock, I think he'd say he should have hustled after that ball a little better. If you ask so and so, and I think there's a lot of those possible oh. quotes after this game. Inoa with a terrific play in the hole, short hop at the other end by Borno, and a one-two-three inning will go to the bottom of the eighth. Rockies nine to four.
Dodger Baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Well, that sure looks good. We'll go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. And the Rockies with a 9-4 lead. Ian Thomas beginning his second inning of relief. Giants failed to score in the top of the ninth. Last licks for the Athletics in Oakland. San Francisco 5 and the A's 4. Ben Paulson first pitch fouls it back. And it's nothing in one. Mets won today. And so the Mets now will move a game in front of the Dodgers, but realistically two games in front. Because if they end with an identical record, Mets and Dodgers, the Mets will have the home field advantage because they beat the Dodgers four out of seven during regular season play. So this has been a costly day and a costly weekend for the Dodgers to this point. Paulson takes outside. Two balls and one strike. Blackman and LeMahieu to follow. Utley, Ellis, and Seeger to bat for the Dodgers in the ninth. Angels beat the Mariners today, three to two. Houston beat Texas four to two. Mets routed the Reds 8-1. to one. Cubs and Pirates play later. Minnesota 7-1 to one over the Tigers. Blue Jays won. And the Yankees won. And Paulson takes a walk to begin the bottom of the eighth. Now Charlie Blackman stepping in. He is one for three and a sacrifice today. He's also robbed of a base hit on a sprawling catch made by Chris Heisey back in the third inning. Blackman at 290 and 41 stolen bases. One ball, no strikes. Of course, the last game of the season between these two clubs. One and one. And for the Dodgers, barring some massive ninth inning, it's going to come down to the final seven games of the season and one game at a time in San Francisco. A's are hitting in the bottom of the ninth, trailing five to four to the Giants at O.Co. Coliseum. If Oakland doesn't get off the deck and the Dodgers don't get off the deck in the ninth, that ballpark in San Francisco is going to be electric. It's going to be a playoff type atmosphere. And each game will be single elimination for the Giants. It's now one out of the bottom of the ninth. Brett Laurie fly to center field off Santiago Casilla. One ball, two strikes to Blackman. LeMayhew on deck and Arenado to follow. Two balls and two strikes. As I look out over the defense right now, the Dodgers have this could be the playoff defense. Maybe not Chase at first, but Howie at second, Jimmy at short. Justin Turner could have got pinch hit for by Corey, or Corey could have started it against certain guys. Carl Crawford, Jock, Andre Ethier, and Wright. 
Seeger took over at third in the last inning. Alex Guerrero began the day there. Three balls and two strikes as Blackman steps out of the batter's box. On three and two, let's see if Paulson goes. He's not. First and second, nobody out as Thomas works, walks the first two hitters here in the eighth. Double barrel action in the Colorado bullpen. Jim Johnson has been warming in the Dodger bullpen and he's going to come in with first and second. And nobody out of the bottom of the eighth. Rockies nine, Dodgers four. Rookies Jock Peterson and Scott Shevler help Tommy Lasorda celebrate his birthday. Plus, Ben Scully breaks a Guinness World Record. Don't miss Backstage Dodgers on Thursday, 7 o'clock, right here on Sportsnet LA. Jim Johnson making his 71st appearance. A record of two up and six down. And since coming to the Dodgers, he has an ERA of over ten and a half, so it's been a rugged go in his new digs. LeMayhew stepping in. He's got one hit, one RBI, and three runs scored today. The A's are down to their final out in the bottom of the ninth. Giants five to four. Johnson delivers a strike, and it's one and one. Arenado on deck. First and second, nobody out. Nothing in two to LeMahieu. Back to back walks for Paulson and Blackman to begin the eighth against Ian Thomas, has done. And Johnson is the fifth Dodger pitcher. Count holds at nothing and two. The A's are down to their final out. Giants five to four. Coco Crisp is the hitter. That's in Oakland. Outside. Talked about it when Pedro Baez came in. You know, situations you want to get tested and get ready for the postseason. Jim Johnson right here can win a lot of votes of confidence by getting out of this jam. 
One and two. Breaking ball, call strike three. That was a beauty. At this altitude, to get the ball to break, you didn't really start it on a downward trajectory, but had enough spin on it to get it to drop, drop down in the strike zone. This breaking ball at sea level is huge. You see how it tightens up up here. Looks more like a high, big breaking slider compared to a curveball. AJ did a nice job framing it. Now Nolan Arenado. Bounce to second, walk. A three-run home run, a sacrifice fly, four RBIs today. Johnson misses high and in. Misses high and in. You'd think it would be a fastball, but that was a backup breaking ball. Another one that was kind of started on the, the big Similar trajectory. Similar to the pitch he just got LeMahieu on. That one just didn't break. Yep. Johnson just returned to the team this morning. His wife gave birth to a bouncing baby girl, Charlie Elizabeth. So congratulations to the Johnson family. And now back to the business at hand. Two balls and no strikes to Arenado. Drilled into left field for a base hit. Rounding third and heading home is Paulson. The throw to the plate, not in time. Colorado 10-4. Arenado with his second hit and his fifth run batted in today. He's had nine RBIs in the last two games against the Dodgers. A grand slam last night. Three hits in a series. You don't think you're going to have a very good series, but he's had an outstanding series because every one of his hits has caused damage. And they've been louder than the next. Yeah, ball right over the part of the plate, tailing in. Career high five RBIs. Something tells me that he's going to probably break that over the course of his career. Grand slam last night, five RBIs today. I don't know if he's player of the week, player of the weekend. Mm -hmm. Off the glove of Johnson, he's got nothing to do with it except put it in his pocket. And that's the bases are loaded. That's one of those balls where you've got to be aware of where your defense is playing prior to that ball being hit because that ball was going to be tailor made. For Jimmy Rollins, who had the shift. Well, look where Jimmy is playing right there. He is going right to him. It would be a routine, possibly double play ball. You know, Nomar, that's not something in my generation you had to think about quite as much because the, the fielders weren't behind you usually. Right. They were in the more conventional positions. But in today's day and age, it's almost like the pitcher has to look around at his defense before he throws the ball. Kind of almost make on. it part of your routine. Exactly. Kyle Parker pinch hitting with the bases loaded. And the usual infield signal signals before you throw the ball is your, your catchers maybe saying, hey, get the out at first. We're going to, you know, it's three and two count. We're not, you know, we're losing our force out and the bases and the runners are going to be running and other different things that are going on. It's almost maybe even Jimmy. Or whoever it is, Chase, if it's the second baseman, giving a heads up. Into center field for a base hit. Two more runs come in to make it 12 to 4. All the while, it's gone final in Oakland, and the Giants have beaten the Athletics 5 to 4. Nothing good has come of this day for the Dodgers. Nothing. Again, that extra out kills you. They you know the deflection from Jim Johnson's glove could have been a routine double play ball. Now you get one more swing in the bat if you're the Rockies and you find a way, even though you blooped it in, you had one more chance and it worked out for them. You know, just talking about that defense, you know, man on first, automatically the pitcher turns around to a second baseman, shortstop says, who's covering on a comebacker? Right. Almost now, they need to turn around and say, where are you playing? So you know to pull your glove back. But reaction and instinct too often takes over. Do something you're going to have to build. Yeah. I mean, I would still think on that play he would have turned around before just to know where you are on a comebacker. Yep. To first. There's one. And that's all they're going to get.
So the Giants have beaten the A's five to four. Unless the Dodgers can come up with oh say nine runs in the ninth. Their lead over San Francisco will be down to six with seven to play. The folks in Colorado now know. Now Dickerson. I'm sorry, Rafael Ino is the batter. Noah two for four. A scoreboard filled with crooked numbers for the Rockies today. They scored one in the first. Rather one in the second, one in the third, then four in the fourth. Three in the sixth and three more in the eighth. And Noah's done. Rocky's inning is over and not a moment too soon. 12 4 will go to the ninth. Gurkha. He was playing right field in the 16th inning back at Dodger Stadium when Walt Weiss ran out of players. So now we're seeing him in a more custom spot making his eighth appearance. Here I have 9.95. Maybe so you're saying we got a chance. It's going to take a lot of hits and a lot of base runners, but we got to. See if you can chip away, but on the bench, you don't think about chipping away until it actually happens right here. Utley to lead it off in the ninth. In what has turned out to be a miserable weekend in Denver. Dodgers on the verge of being swept. Again, time in the calendar in their hip pocket. But they've not played well. They're on the verge of losing seven of their last nine and eight of their last 12. The lead over the Giants will be six with seven to play. And of course, four games in a row in San Francisco. And my guess is it's going to be a little noisy up there tomorrow. It's going to be a nice test. And it's going to be a, a great atmosphere for the Dodgers to get ready for what it's going to be like in the playoff and playoff intensity. And maybe that's the kind of thing that's going to wake them up because right now the they don't look like themselves. It'll be Granky and Peavy tomorrow night. First pitch a quarter past seven. And then Kershaw on Tuesday night. And if somehow the Giants win those two. It'll be up to Bolsinger and Anderson after that. So the Dodgers go up there. The task is straightforward. They have to win one. 
magic number becomes one even though it's two. Because those four games in San Francisco count as two. The Dodgers would record a win. The Giants would record a loss in the same game. And Utley will record a double to begin the ninth inning. Chase in some ways is now looking like a super utility player. His career is not that, of course. I believe will all-star second baseman. But now with the ability at second, and he, they've had him at third, and today he's been playing some first. It's going to be a flexible piece. And don't forget, tomorrow, Kike Hernandez will return to the Dodgers. His hamstring issues presumably are over and out. The likelihood of seeing Puig the rest of this season pretty near remote. His hamstring not coming around as well as they'd like. Ellis. One ball, no strikes. Peraza, too, he's from all, all we can gather is done. 1 0 to Ellis. There's a strike. One ball, one strike. So when we last saw Gurkha in the 16th inning back at Dodger State, they said, All right, Walt, what was he doing out there? Well, they'd run out of players. And he said, Gurkha is a, our super shagger. And so during BP, he'd be out there in right field and he'd be running everything down. He said, oh, Well, got nobody else. So the super shagger got a chance to play an inning in right. And played with two other super shaggers. Bobby Welch was a super shagger. And uh, Roger McDowell was a super shagger. And in the back of their mind and in the bottom of their heart, they're just hoping for those kind of games so that they can actually get in there. And Bobby Welch did, I remember, and I know Roger McDowell did. Roger McDowell was so good that he and Jesse Orozco, when he played for Davy Johnson with the Mets, they would bring him in in relief. And when a lefty-righty combination came to the plate, Davy wouldn't take him out of the game. He'd put him into left field or right field and save him to pitch to the next batter. Where they could do the least amount of damage defensively. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they'd move him according to where they thought the ball was going to be hit, what position they'd go to until they needed him back on the mound. Where the ball was going to be hit, more importantly, where it was not going to be hit. <laughs> exactly. Ellis down on strikes, first out of the night. Roger McDowell had some interesting stories that he performed throughout his baseball career, and one was how he shagged. Really? Yeah, he'd, he, he'd go out for early batting practice before the gates were open, and his goal was to try and shag naked <laughs> in every ballpark he played in. He got pretty close. He'd wear gym shorts and nothing else and a pair of tennis shoes and no socks and a T-shirt. And he'd pretend like he was out there sunning himself early at 1.30 in the afternoon during early batting practice. And slowly, every article of clothing would go off for the last fly ball. Catch was the ball and quickly run back to his clothes. I was going to say that was before the days of the cell phone. Yes. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Seeger. Took a call third strike in his first at-bat. He'd run into the left center gap from center field, catch a ball, and run back to his shorts. Somebody was really away. <laughs> they would have stolen the shorts while I was tracking them down. <laughs> One out in the ninth. One ball and two strikes to Corey Seeger. Gurkha deals. Seeger's done, two out. <laughs> Only one more game to be played today in Major League Baseball. That's the Pirates and Cubs. The ESPN game coming up in a little bit. All the others have gone final. The Mets won today, routed the Reds. In the Philly Washington game, Papelbon and Bryce Harper got into it in the dugout. 
Milwaukee beat the Cardinals. And a fly ball to left field, and it is fair. And a grounds rule double for Crawford. So the Dodgers score a run, and it's 12 to 5. As you know by now, the Giants beat the A's 5 to 4. The Yankees won. The Blue Jays won. Twins won. Indians lost. Angels edged the Mariners 3 to 2. And Houston beat Texas 4 to 2. All the other games, those outcomes are best enjoyed by family and friends. Peterson today. One for three and a walk. Jason Gurkha. Deals and a slow hit ball to first. And that completes what has turned out to be a long and lost weekend for the Dodgers in Colorado. Swept by the Rockies. And routed today 12 to 5 for Colorado 12 runs 15 hits one error the Dodgers four runs 13 hits and no errors the uh, Lexus player of the game Nolan Arenado who hit a three run home run in the fourth a sack fly in the sixth and then a line drive single to left in the eighth he scored two knocked in five this following a night in which he hit the Grand Slam last night. That is a wrap for us from Denver, and not a moment too soon for Alana Rizzo. Oral Hershiser, no more Garcia Parra. Charlie Steiner saying good night and goodbye. Now we're going to send it back to Access Sportsnet Dodgers, brought to you by Nissan, and we'll talk.